Welcome to my talk, uh, Rainbow Frogs, HDR and Color Management in GameScope. This is going to cover all of the different things that we've done in GameScope for Color Management and HDR on Steam Deck in like the past year or so. But uh, unfortunately, this talk is abridged because uh, I wrote a lot of slides and uh, I then realized I only had 20 minutes. So we're just going to power through them. Uh, hi, I'm Josh. Hello, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I work on GameScope and Steam Deck and DXVK and Mesa for Valve and yeah. Uh, so some people here might not know what GameScope is. Uh, let me explain. Uh, GameScope is a Wayland compositor for gaming used on the Steam Deck with very low latency and targeting very low power consumption. And really, GameScope does everything. We have HDR, color management, display timing, VRR, low latency. We do blending in all the right spaces and everything. And, uh, but most importantly, now, it includes color management, which is uh, really cool. So why would we want color management on the Steam Deck? Like, that seems like not something gamers would care about, but really we do, because the internal display of the Steam Deck has a fairly modest gamut of only like 82% sRGB, uh, but consumers really want a much more vibrant display. So uh, one approach that we could use to do some form of gamut mapping is the existing CTM matrix in DRM, but the problem with that is uh, it introduces really horrible clipping. Uh, it does make it a lot more vibrant, but people really know something's off. Uh, but uh, if you, uh, dis AMD Display Core is really cool. And if you watched Melissa's talk that was just before mine, you would know that. Uh, and so there's lots and lots of features, but the most important one there is that we have a shaper and a 3D LUT, which means that we can do like film grade tier, like color management and yeah, all of that. Uh, so we have much greater control. We use a CTM near the gray axis and just smoothly decrease the influence. Uh, as we get closer and closer to the gamut edges. And yeah, it looks a lot better. There's no clipping. If you download the slides and look at the image before and the image after, you'll see it looks a lot different. Uh, but it's pretty hard on a projector to really show it off there. Um, yeah, so how we expose this in the UI? Not everybody, like we're changing the default behavior of the vibrancy of the Steam Deck, which is not everyone's going to want that. Some people might want more than what we want. Uh, so we added a UI where it's just a basic vibrant slider which controls the gamut wideness for SDR. We don't actually increase the uh, gamut wideness for any HDR content. That's always rendered completely faithfully. Um, and the, we also uh, added color temperature because a lot of people on Reddit started to ask for it. And yeah, rolled in night mode and everything like that. So another question is HDR. Now, if you see on the screen, there's an image of a HDR TV. And uh, yeah, lots of consumers are really interested in HDR and gaming in HDR. So we want that on the Steam Deck. But HDR is hard. Uh, Harry Wendland did a talk last year. And there's lots and lots of nuances to go through. But knowing what we know about the AMD dis uh, display pipeline now, HDR is not that hard for us. So what's traditionally hard about HDR? Well, there's lots of, lots of little things that you have to get right. You can have mixed HDR and SDR monitors, uh, he, mixed HDR and SDR windows even on deck for like drop downs. We have like the quick access menu. We have like the Steam overlay. So we do have to handle mixed HDR and SDR content. Um, there's a multitude of HDR formats like PQ, SCRGB, which is just uh, pretty similar, absolute as well, linear and nits over 80. Uh, you have to have all of your internal color processing over 8 bits per channel, otherwise you just start to get horrible banding, especially with PQ, where on a lot of displays you're kind of throwing away the high end because, uh, yeah, like if your display is only like 500 or 1000 net, like a large part of that range is just completely unused. Uh, you have to pass and patch EDIDs because, uh, yeah, um, you need to f have some way of funneling all of the display metadata about uh, the maximum luminance and the minimum luminance to the application. And all of our HDR content is Win32. And Wine only supports X11 right now. GameScope is very X11-centric. Uh, 
We have to support undocking for HDR games so users can get out of the HDR experience or at least play it in like a decent-ish way. Um, and supporting HDR throughout the whole stack is just really, really hard and a lot of work because we have to funnel everything through. There's like DXVK, there's VKD 3D Proton, and uh, yeah. So despite showing a single window, we have mixed blended content. We've got the performance overlay. We've got the quick access menu. We've got the Steam overlay. We've got drop downs and modals that can appear. Our solution for that is to simply just uh, use the existing color pipeline and use a shaper transfer function to go from gamma 22 to PQ. And then we use the blend LUT on, that is per plane to go to linearized display referred space. And then we regamma that back up to PQ, and everything's blended fine. And it just works after a lot of work dealing with the precision issues in the kernel pipeline. And, but it works now. <laughs> uh, we also have to handle SCRGB, which I alluded to before. There's lots of SCRGB Windows content, such as Cyberpunk 2077. And the problem with SCRGB is it relies on negative values to represent values outside of the 709 gamut. And the easiest solution to that would be to just uh, do a color transform matrix from 709 to 2020. And that's exactly what we do. Uh, some people in the audience might be thinking, oh, you should use the HDR metadata. It gives you all the primary info. But then you have to trust that the app is not completely stupid and giving you completely wrong information there. Uh, the HDR metadata is very unreliable. It's very rare that apps actually set it correctly. Quite often, you'll get values where the primaries are all zero, the primaries are always 709, even though it really wants more out of it, or the max luminance is something like 200,000 nits. You just can't trust it. So we just do a color transform matrix from 709 to 2020, and then we're already in the space to go straight to PQ. Uh, with the shaper transfer function, and then we use the exact same color processing pipeline that we use for the rest of HDR. So another problem is that we need our scan out to look completely identical to when we're doing composition. So we had to implement tetrahedral 3D LUT interpolation, so I converted the code from OpenColorIO uh, to a shader that just uses a 3D texture. And another problem is that the dGamma ROM on AMD GPU it, only for the ROM, not the LUT, is applied uh, per tap. So that means that if you're doing bilinear and upscaling, that means that it's being upscaled in linear space and then going blended back. Uh, so we have to do that as well. And Vulkan and OpenGL, et cetera, doesn't have something like a PQ image view. So we don't automatically get that linearization there. So we have to implement bilinear ourselves manually in the shader for HDR to do texture gather for four texels, do the D gamma, then blend them together with the weights. This is important as most people on the Steam Deck will be using 720p, 800p scaled up to some insanely large TV size like 4K. So it, it's important to get this right. And blending in PQ space looks much worse than blending in sRGB. So doing the NTN part of HDR was a lot. Like, uh, we had, uh, I did a bunch of experiments with uh, KHR display. I did a bunch of work so we can get the 2020 on the output because the color space property in the kernel was broken, which is very fun. Yay! And uh, yeah, uh, we did all the kernel stuff with Melissa. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, we had to get the display uh, in HDR mode, which was, well, I didn't know anything about HDR when I started this. So it was uh, quite the interesting minefield, especially when. Uh, what do you set for like if you're displaying SDR content? Um, one of the main problems there is if you set the max di uh, max display luminance to uh, the same as like the full frame luminance, then some displays will look completely fine because they don't care. They don't do tone mapping themselves. They just clip. But some TVs will just take that and be like, oh, your full frame luminance is going to be the same as your max mastering luminance? I'm going to just tone map the hell out of you. And it looks completely broken. So for SDR content, we just have uh, the max and the full frame luminance set to the full fr max full frame luminance in the EDID so the displays don't break themselves. <laughs> Uh, we also need some way to read the EDID and DXVK. Thank you, Simon, for lib display info. I really appreciate it. It's really cool. Please make it work on Windows. Uh, I had to port it to DXVK because we also have to read the EDID there, which is 
really fun. Gamescope just passes the edit to the application using a root window property, which is a horrible hack, but it works. Uh, we also patched the edit to hide the Steam Deck's rotation, so it gave me a good excuse to finally go ahead and do it. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so we do all of that. We had to do it on the swap chain side. That's what the different uh, HDR color spaces in Vulkan map to. We followed the HDR metadata, but unfortunately, as I mentioned before, the HDR metadata is hopelessly unreliable, and that's probably why a lot of games look really bad when they're setting 20,000 nits as their mastering luminance and they're not getting filtered out. Luckily, we filter out bad HDR metadata in Gamescope right now, but it's still in the air whether we should actually send it to display at all. Uh, we had to support NVAPI and AGS, which really sucked because they just override the whole screen. They don't do anything per surface or per swap chain. So yeah, that's just a whole thing, which makes SDR content look bad. My implementation of that just sets like some global state, and DXVK then sets every one of its swap chains to have that color space. And it works. Uh, phew, I'm glad that's over. But Josh, how can we support uh, HDR when Gamescope only supports X11 clients? And my answer to that is I don't know. Thank you for coming to my talk. Goodbye. No. Uh, we have the Gamescope WSI layer. And the Gamescope WSI layer just takes a, uh, it's a Vulkan layer that when you create a, a Vulkan swap chain, it creates a Wayland surface underneath and then says to Gamescope, hey, this X11 window right here, why don't you just replace it with this Wayland surface? And then we just use the Wayland WSI and we do a lot of back channel stuff. And it, there's a lot of advantages to it as well. We get lower latency. We're not limited by visual ID, so we can get 10-bit through and through with scan-out dithering on AMD GPU, which is great. Uh, and we can implement an iterate on anything we want without going through X server, Wayland protocols, Mesa. And we also implement display timing. It's a flawless plan aside from child windows. Oh, they are horrible. So what we do there is we still have to fall back to X11 sometimes but it's only if we have a child window that's not covering the entirety of its parent or it's a top-level window with a child window that isn't, so we have to do a lot of magic to unpick that because there's the two things. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's not a compliant solution, but it's good enough. Uh, if we transition uh, to being able to bypass to not, we just send out of date to the app for it to remake its swap chain, and if we can start to like transition to uh, use a, a, a Wayland swap chain because the child window started to cover it or whatever. We just send suboptimal so it will make, remake it when it's ready. So now what? Uh, upstream Wayland color management is still pretty in its infancy. There's lots of debate about it. It's four years old. There's no Mesa implementation at all. And so we just do our own thing. We have a custom protocol for Gamescope to talk to the compositor. It implements the X11 window replacement with uh, override window content, originally made by Simon, but I had to fix a lot of bugs with it. <laughs> uh, the simplest thing ever. It just sends the VK color space KHR over the Wayland wire, and well, we could do better. We could have a protocol enum, but we don't have a need for it right now. Uh, yeah, uh, we'd send the HDR metadata over the wire in the exact same way you'd send it to a HDMI or DisplayPort sync over the wire with CTA 861.g format which is basically just the exact same data you have in Vulkan as floats, but just mapped to some fixed point mumbo jumbo. Uh, yeah, there's the link if you want to check it out. Uh, so that's like the main color pipeline. And as you can see, uh, for SCRGB, there's no degamma. We just go to 709 to 2020. We go straight through uh, the shaper to put it in PQ. We do all the 3D LUT stuff that we normally do, and we, then we just blend it back, same as everything. And then for HDR10, we just don't do the color transform matrix, and we still have the uh, D gamma uh, that's per tap. And then for SDR and HDR, we just do S, uh, we have a D gamma of sRGB to linear, but then we have the shaper transfer function uh, actually go from gamma 2.2 to, uh, uh, to PQ with like our HDR brightness scale and the night mode and all, all of our uh, SDR gamut wideness for HDR as well. Uh, yeah, then that just gets blended as well. Uh, future kernel work, things that we need. We need 3x4 CTMs. Please, I beg you, we need 3x4 CTMs. I can't tell you why yet, but eventually you'll see. Uh, we also would like to split up enabling and setting of uh, the lookup tables, because setting a big 3D lot on an atomic commit with all the register writes is a lot of work, and it takes multiple 
like eight milliseconds or something to set a full 3D LUT, which takes forever, which means that you can miss VSync, which sucks. This is what it looks like right now. It's really slow. Uh, yeah, so that's our future work. Uh, we have a bunch of cool tools. We have a full HDR analysis suite by Lilium available in developer options right now. We have heat maps for debugging. If you're interested in HDR and you want to see how it actually works, please use these tools. If you're a game developer, please use these tools. I promise you they will help you out. Uh, here's some pretty pictures. There's the HDR analysis suite running in GameScope. There's some cool heat maps. It kind of looks broken because the projector has a very poor black level. Uh, but yeah, you can see like all, all of this is like 400 nit to like 1,000-ish. Uh, yeah, so it's all the way coming through. This game is Armored Core 6. Thank you for coming. Uh, any questions? And special thanks to Harry, Melissa, Jeremy, and Lillian. <laughs> Sorry about it being so quick, by the way. <laughs> I only had 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, not really a question, just saying that uh, your Wayland X11 hack is yes. impressive and terrible, and I kind of love it. Yeah. So far, we haven't had any problems with it, which surprises even me. Uh, but yeah, we, we've shipped it to users now, and so far, we haven't had any problems. And we're hoping to also enable it for not just HDR games, but like every game, because the majority of games these days output 10 bits per channel, like uh, UE4, UE5, Basically, every modern game engine outputs 10 bit, and we would really like scan out dithering because it really helps with banning. Hi, we have a question from Matrix. Mm -hmm. Dodo GTA asks How hard would it be to make Gamescope properly work with the experimental Wine Wayland driver? <laughs> uh, we have very, very basic support for XDG shell right now. I <sighs> the problem is, right now, we don't get enough information. And so one th hack that we have in Proton is that uh, Wine will literally send us the Win32 window flags as a property on the X11 window. And we use that for a lot of determination of like focus and all of that sort of thing. So we, we need a way to like get all of those focus hints. Like Gamescope is a very gamified console-like experience and we need to keep that at like feature parity before we start moving to Wayland and stuff like that. But it, it would be like, nice someday, but right now uh, the swap chain override stuff is servicing us better than doing all of the work to make sure that focus and everything in, in game scope with Wine Wayland would work properly. Hi. Um, so there's now a color management protocol, which is, I think, mostly done with the bike shedding. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any plans for uh, Valve to implement the or to help with the implementations at least, because I think that's one of the things they're still struggling with, which is you know having an implementation where they can find all the necessary bugs that might still be in a protocol or in uh, a spec. We're, we're happy to like help test stuff out there, but doing the whole implementation when uh, nobody has really done a Mesa branch or anything yet, it's, it's not really worthwhile for us right now. Like I don't think adding a Mesa branch to like all of that stuff is like particularly difficult, but uh, it's also not super needed and right, well, at least for us right now. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>